Okay, this one isn't long, but it definitely adds to the paranormal. So this one time I was hanging out with this kid. And I was out like an hour past my curfew, but I didn't really care because I thought my dad was asleep. So I pull up to my house and this kid's like, um, your dad's awake. I was like, there's no way he's awake. He has to get up at 3 a.m. and it's 10 p.m. He's like, no, I just saw someone standing outside the window and walk away. So I'm like, okay, great. I'm going to get my ass beat. So I go inside. I'm ready to get yelled at. And I don't see my dad. So I go into his room and this man is passed out snoring. So I was a little freaked out because my dad was asleep. So who did he see? So in sixth grade, I had three friends over and we were playing hide and go seek. So I had in the pantry and there's no way anybody could hear me. There's no vents and I wasn't even talking. So I'm sitting there like, cause like I wanted to win the fuck. So I'm sitting in there and 10 minutes pass and I hear my friends talking downstairs. So I go down there and I'm like, did y'all give up? And they look at me and they're like, we thought you were in the crawl space. I was like, no. They were like, no, we were literally talking to somebody in the crawl space. And they said like, it was this little girl like asking for help and shit. So I get freaked out and I'm like looking around. I'm like, what the fuck? And around two minutes later, the doorknob to the crawl space starts going like this, like shaking and shit. So I literally had a heart attack and I was like, okay, we're leaving. So we grabbed all of our shit. We grabbed my dog and we went in front of the house. I called my dad crying. I was like, there's something in this fucking house. The night this happened, my sister had a hard time falling asleep. So she got up to get some water, you know? When she walked out of her room to go to the kitchen, she noticed my dad's door was open. And he never leaves his door open or sleeps with his door open. But she ignored it and she went to the kitchen to get some water. So as my sister's walking back to her room, she turns around and looks at my dad's door and sees this yellow blob figure with like auras coming out of it. So my sister stares at it for a good two minutes. And this bitch sprints back to her room. And this bitch could not sleep. Like she stayed in her room, she couldn't sleep. So in the morning she wakes me up and she tells me what happens. And because of what happened the night before, I'm like, okay, this is not normal. This is not fucking normal. So I told my dad and he didn't believe us because, you know, we just daydream like kids, it doesn't, it's not real. So we looked up the meaning of seeing this type of figure. And I remember just reading it's evil. And then it could possibly be a skinwalker, but I don't believe that. I know what skinwalkers are and I don't think that was a skinwalker. This is why you should never use a red crayon. This is about a creepypasta called the crayons. A married couple who had just returned from their honeymoon decided to buy a house. And one day the husband was walking down the hall when he spotted a red crayon lying on the floor. Now the couple didn't have any children so they wondered where this crayon had come from. The next day the husband came home from work to find another red crayon lying in the same spot. He was very puzzled and decided to ask his wife about it. She told him that every day since they first moved into the house she had been finding finding red crayons when she was cleaning. And they were always lying in the same spot at the end of the hallway. So he tapped on the wall at the end of the hallway and heard a hollow sound. Curious, he began peeling off the wallpaper. And behind the wallpaper, he found a pair of sliding doors. They were nailed shut, so he had to open them one by one. And then he opened the doors to reveal a small hidden room. Looking inside, they saw that the walls of the little space were covered in words scribbled in red crayon. Over and over were the words. Mommy, I'm sorry, let me out. Mommy, I'm sorry, let me out. Story ends, the creepier it gets. In 2015, a college student was renting the basement apartment of his friend's house. One weekend, his basement roommates take off for the night, so he decides to use that time to get some homework done distraction free. But as soon as he sits down to do his work, his friend upstairs and his family starts making all this noise, moving furniture around, shuffling feet. It's impossible to focus, so he picks up his phone and he texts his friend. You guys sound like you're really having a good time up there. I'm not really getting anything done. Can I come up? And his buddy says, no one is home. We went to Wisconsin for the weekend. Terrified, he runs out the side door to get a look in the window to see who's making all the noise. All the lights are off in the house. There's not a single car in the driveway. He had been home alone the whole time. So for the first time in a really long time, I actually had something scary happen to me last night. So I was up really late because my boyfriend's in Vegas and their time difference is two hours behind. And he goes to bed really late. So for the past few days, I've been staying up till 4 a.m. until he falls asleep. So last night I decided I wanted to get some food, a late night snack. And at this point, I think it's like 2 a.m. And in my basement, I hear some rumbling and fumbling, but nobody's down there. Everybody's asleep. I don't have any pets. My dog's dead. I don't have any pets. So I'm in the kitchen listening. And my kitchen is right here. And like the stairs to the basement is right there. And like my house is low key empty. So you could hear everything. And I start hearing little whispers. A little. So I'm sitting there eating my snack. And I hear that shit. And I pause the YouTube video I was watching. And I start hearing footsteps come upstairs. So I sat in my backyard for the rest of the night. Up until like 3 a.m. And then I went inside and went to bed. But it only gets worse. This is a story time on my new haunted doll, Tilly. Now, I actually found Tilly in a thrift store. Um, yes, you can find a haunted doll in a thrift store. So I go to them, I see 
see what dog calls out to me. If I feel like Anita's haunted, I instantly picked up her and I felt a connection immediately. I almost felt obsessed. And that kind of scares me because I'm like, she has this really strong connection with her and maybe it's not safe to bring her home. But I didn't feel like it was a dangerous spirit or anything. So yes, I brought her home and I'm in love with her. Absolutely, she's beautiful. And so I went live with you guys. A lot of you guys saw it. Used my dowsing rods, asked her some questions and the questions I asked her and the answers will shock you. I guess she was born in the 1970s. She was six years old when she died. Her father killed her and she told me the reason I have a connection with her is because I'm her mother in a past life. If you're ever driving late at night, don't do what they did. One night a boy and his friend were on their way to a school dance when they saw a girl on the side of the road looking lost. They stopped the car and asked if she needed a ride and she asked him to take her home. They said that they were going to a school dance and asked if she wanted to come too. She agreed. But these boys wouldn't know yet that this girl was not an average hitchhiker. So they all got in the car and the girl sat in the back seat. After a while, the girl would constantly say that she was cold, so one of the boys gave her his jacket. They got to the dance and things were pretty normal. But what happened after would make the boys question reality. When the night was almost over, it was finally time to take the girl home. When they almost arrived, the girl told them where she lived, but told them to drop her off close by so she can walk the rest of the way. So that's what they did. But after the girl walked away, the boy who let her borrow his jacket realized that he never asked for his jacket back. His friend said that they could just come back tomorrow for it. The next morning, they came back expecting to get the jacket and leave, but things were not so simple. They came up to the girl's house and knocked on the door, but they were shocked at what they discovered as soon as the door opened. If you're ever driving late at night, don't do what they did. Two boys picked up a girl on the side of the road while they were on their way to a school dance. In the car, she kept saying that she was cold, so one of the boys gave her his jacket. But when the night ended and they were about to drop her off, the girl accidentally left with the jacket. So the boys said that they would just come back the next day to get it. But when they came back and knocked on her door, they discovered something that would make them question what is real and what isn't. An old woman opened the door and asked them who they were looking for. After talking to her for a while, it was revealed that the girl they found on the side of the road was her daughter. But the thing is, she had been dead for 12 years. She was killed in a car accident at the same street corner they first saw her. The old woman pointed to a cemetery down the road and said, that's where we buried her. The boys didn't believe her at first. They'd spent the whole night with this girl, so they knew that she had to be real. But they went to the cemetery and saw the boy's jacket draped over a gravestone. And on the gravestone was the girl's name and the date of her death, exactly 12 years ago to the day.